Hi, friends. I am Rabbi Becca of FBJC Emek Shalom in Simsbury, Connecticut. I stand before you today joined by my fellow Simsbury clergy to denounce the murder of George Floyd and express our profound sadness for the countless people of color whose lives have been cut short by senseless hatred and the blatant and systemic racism that rages unchecked through our country. Jewish tradition teaches that all people are descendants of a single set of parents, so that no one can ever say, my ancestor is greater than yours. This foundational belief in the intrinsic equality of all human life is one of the very first lessons we learn. All of us are created equal. This belief in equality compels us to act in response to any form of discrimination. We have an obligation to look deeply into ourselves and do the hard and uncomfortable work of confronting our implicit biases, challenging the deep systemic and cultural sources of those biases, and addressing the racial disparities that plague our society. We have a responsibility to redefine the systems and structures that perpetuate racial injustices. We can never achieve the value of justice for all to which our country aspires until every last one of us is a recipient of that justice. I'm the Reverend Taylor Albright, the rector of Trinity Episcopal Church in Tarraville. And I'm the Reverend Rebecca Hatch, rector of St. Albans Episcopal Church, Simsbury. We stand together with faith leaders in Simsbury, along with Episcopalians across our nation, against racism, a system that has worked well for some of us, but absolutely not for all of us, and certainly not for black and brown Americans. We join voices begging God for forgiveness, and we repent for not addressing the sin of racism with the urgency it calls for. We hear the cry of God's people, people crying out for justice and redemption. As Episcopalians, we make promises at our baptism to God and to each other, to strive for justice and peace among all people, and to respect the dignity of every human being. We are called by God to listen for God's voice among all God's people, especially the black and brown voices of our neighbors in Simsbury and across our nation. I'm Deacon Art Miller from St. Mary's Catholic Church here in Simsbury. George Floyd was not killed because he was a young black man. He was killed because of the many silent voices that refuse to believe what the victims of racism have been screaming, black lives matter. He was murdered because our beloved country believes everyone has the same opportunity and is equal under the law. He was the victim of fear and ignorance converging into violent hatred. The men who murdered him were not what America says it is, but what America most assuredly has become. He will not be the last one to be martyred unless America has the bravery to see its weaknesses and the courage to admit them. The question then becomes, what will your legacy be when justice and righteousness converge? My name is Frank Matera. I am the pastor of St. Mary's Church in Simsbury, where Deacon Art and I serve together. For the past few months, all of us have faced the great danger of a pandemic. And one of the things that we have all said again and again is that we are all in this together, and indeed we are. But right now we are facing another pandemic, a much more serious pandemic, one that has the ability to not only destroy our bodies, but also, and more importantly, to destroy our souls 
and the very soul of this country. This is the great pandemic of racism, and it will not be stemmed by ventilators or face masks. The only way it will be overcome is by justice and peace, recognizing the dignity of every human being, no matter who he or she is. In the days ahead, we need to commit ourselves anew to the dignity, the importance, and the value of every human life, but these days, especially to the value of black lives. I am Pastor George Harris from First Church of Christ in Simsbury. I'm Reverend Kevin Weichel from First Church of Christ in Simsbury. Jesus confronted injustice in ways that were specific and personal. He didn't just challenge Roman authority, although he certainly did do that. He also challenged his disciples' own prejudices, for example, towards Samaritans a persecuted minority in his day. Following Jesus today requires that we confront our own racism in ways that are specific and personal. Specifically saying black lives matter calls out our particularly toxic and deadly prejudice toward African Americans. Racism acts like a toxin in the water. We all drink the toxic water of racism. It is in us. It's the murders of Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd and the woman who called the police on a black bird watcher in Central Park that are the most recent examples that remind us of the pervasiveness of racism. We must all work together to rid ourselves of the toxins that live within each of us, our institutions, and our culture. Grace and peace. I am Pastor Dana Jorgensen of New Life in Christ Fellowship in Simsbury. We are deeply saddened, having just recently observed Easter, the greatest expression of love, provision for peace, and condemnation of injustice. Saddened that we have also witnessed ongoing racial animosity, violence, and last week, the horrendous killing of a black man, George Floyd, by one appointed to guard and protect him. Christ came to destroy the works of evil and to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. We must fully support those who in peaceful protest expose our failures, call us to repent, and to commit ourselves to equal justice and the mutual expression of God's love. I'm Deacon Deb Clifford from Simsbury United Methodist Church. And I'm Reverend Jean Ott from Simsbury United Methodist Church. At times, we might feel discouraged that after generations of trying, we have not yet made the progress needed. As Methodists, dates like 1792, when Richard Allen left St. George's Church, Philadelphia, to start the African Methodist Episcopal Church, 1844, when Methodists North and South split over slavery and the Episcopacy, and 1939, when the North and South rejoined only to form the central jurisdiction where pastors of color were restricted to stand out as failures to overcome our institutional bent towards racism. However, whether racism is institutional or personal, many, if not all of us, can identify with past struggles and missteps to overcome it. However, guided by the words of author and activist Parker J. Palmer, we resolve that in 2020, we will once again commit ourselves in hope grace, and peace to the ongoing quest to eliminate the scourge of personal and systemic racism. Parker writes, the struggle for love, truth, and justice is forever. Those of us who care about it are not asked to win a final victory in our lifetimes. We are asked to stay faithful to the task, to keep reaching for something better, inspired by the brothers and sisters who came before us. I'm Matt Blazer, the pastor here at Covenant Presbyterian Church, and in addition 
from our text to calling what is good, good, and what is evil, evil, we also lament. God, we lament the deaths by murder of George Floyd, David Dorn, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery. Have mercy on us. Cleanse us of all that enables and empowers these systemic evils and sins and help us to see our role in our homes, in our neighborhoods, that we may move closer to the great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Help us be your instruments of peace, reconciliation, and love. I'm Pastor Chris Dion, Pastor of Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church in Simsbury. Those sickened by the murder of George Floyd felt compassion for him and all who suffer daily injustices due to skin color. In scripture, the Greek root word for compassion actually means internal organs. So when Jesus had compassion, he had a gut-wrenching feeling for those who suffered, and he helped them. Racism's misuse of power is a kick to the gut of our country's ethics. And we're called to assess and change inequality in every system. Racism's another pandemic, but with prejudices infecting others. We need God's kind of compassion, and that takes understanding, suffering along with the vulnerable, and the guts to change. I don't need to say who I am because I'm still me. Lord, in ages past, you breathed courage and life into your frightened people. Tongues of fire danced as words of faith and truth burst from their lips. They all, no matter their place, were to become peace amidst the chaos, joy for the sorrowful, kindness for the lonely, to find the lost, to feed the hungry, to love their neighbor. Help us, Lord, we need you. Today and too many yesterdays, your children are screaming, I can't breathe. 